Hello, I'm Galen. I hope that you are well. I've made two videos so far in the past two weeks, and the main reason I want to make videos on this channel is I am autistic, I am also very shy, and since very young I've always struggled to get my feelings and thoughts across vocally. And just like getting frustrated with not being able to make an art piece the way like you imagine it in your head, when I speak and say things to people, even though it may sound fine to them, uh, for, for me, the way I want to express my thoughts in my mind, it just does not come out as descriptive and precise as what I would like it to come out. So it is very frustrating because sometimes there's misunderstandings and I just, it's very important to me to be able to say clearly what's on my mind and vocabulary has always been something I've been interested in since young. I love learning new words and why I'm saying this is basically in the future videos I want to make on this channel, I want to try and share my thoughts about art and hopefully help my fellow artists out there feel less alone as I struggle a lot myself in this artistic journey. I want to document my journey on this channel and share with you the ups and downs, as cringy as that sounds. So I will do my best to share my thoughts and though I may only be able to express a fraction of what I would like to uh, due to my limited speaking skills, I will just try stay consistent and and bring out my personal thoughts in whatever shape form it may be able to squeeze out of me. So I know for myself and I'm sure many other artists we want to create the best work that we can possible and so we set up really high standards for ourselves. That in itself is not bad, it's good to want to do your best and provide quality. But at least for me I find that the issue that arises not quite in the standards that I set for quality of myself but rather the expectations that I am going to be able to meet at my current skill level. And so I end up asking way too much of myself at a given time. And that can lead to a lot of frustration in the process where I get blinded by all the little mistakes and things that uh, I'm not quite up to scratch yet. And I ignore the overall image that I'm creating, uh, which is the main point to, to bring out an emotion and a story in your art. Like I recently tried a digital painting again, it's not something I do very often, and it's the one that's being played in the background now. Uh, you'll see I repaint and retry doing a lot of different things here because I was getting stuck and especially the hands, I did not plan out the hands properly and so initially I was really upset with myself that I couldn't get the hands right uh, and I was ignoring why I wasn't getting the hands right, it was because I didn't do a proper sketch for it. If I did a proper sketch for it and also my knowledge in anatomy of hands is not great, so uh, obviously I would not be able to paint it super well if uh, even just drawing it is quite difficult for me, so I did not think of that and was only focused on how much it sucked. And acknowledging the flaws and what you need to build and work on in your art is very important uh, and you need to try and stay objective about that. But when it gets to the point uh, where you start uh, hating your art and yourself for not being able to pull off a little thing, uh, that becomes quite an issue and will actually uh, stunt your 
I think that's the right word to stunt your growth thing. But anyway, it'll basically give a reverse effect uh, because you're not actually solving the problem. You're just uh, beating yourself up, uh, up about it. So I know I do that a lot. Another thing that ties into being overly critical of yourself is negative comparison. And I don't think that comparing yourself to other artists is necessarily a bad thing because everybody has artists that they look up to or admire their work of and you want to be able to kind of look at your own art and you want to be able to distinguish what it is about their art that inspires and resonates with you so that you can try and and sort of extract that essence into your own blend of creativity. The real danger I find when drawing comparisons between yourself and other people's art is when you only see the skill that they have and not what's actually making them so special in the first place. Because time and consistency and practice will all get you those skills that you desire. But the thing that will really make your art yours is the way that you express yourself with those skills. And so I'll give an example of myself. Uh, there is an artist that I won't name that I follow. And the stuff that they do and the, the style just is just so cool to me and it really resonates well with me. And they have all these characters and this cool world that they're building. And uh, for a long time, I just saw that and I looked at my own art and I thought, just kind of always giving an inward sigh that like, uh, I, I'll never be able to do this sort of stuff. This is so cool. I can't possibly match up to that. And it's true, I can't because it's their vision. It's their world. It's their thing that they've created. And so uh, what... I need to do and what I think everyone needs to do is to really find what you love and the things that truly come from in you as okay it sounds very cliche but in more practical sense I mean like what sort of genres do you like what do you like fantasy sci-fi and really get into it of the things that in, like make you excited. I find that the more and more I find that the process of creating arts becomes much more fun for me when I'm making something that I can get excited for, something my imagination just starts going when I'm making this thing. So over the about a year now I'd say I've started to discover this and it's a continual growth and discovery, but uh, I've been finding out more about myself and what's what I like. So I love fantasy, but what I love as well that plays into that is more particularly a 1700s aesthetic and and steampunk, and I love animation and animals. And so I sort of, those are just a few broad things, but I've blended that into a world that I'm creating through art. And so that's kind of like my big uh, project that I do uh, drawings for. So pretty much all my drawings sort of tie into this world and narrative that I'm creating slowly. And so I have mostly like anthropomorphic um, cat characters and they're in this uh, sort of like pirate-like island place and there's well I haven't really designed much of it so there there's supposed to be like a lot of monsters in the world and there's monster hunters there's pirates there's kingdoms and so you can see I'm starting to ramble on about this I'll stop now but you want to, it needs, you, you gotta find a thing that just makes you so excited that you can just ramble about it nonsensically and just sort of infuse that into your art. Having something that you love so deeply and that 
you actually care about making and want to share um, can really support yourself when you start doubting your skills uh, because there's one thing to make an artwork that, uh, that the colors are maybe not quite as right as you wanted it and then making an artwork where you really hate what you're doing like it's just the subject matter is boring okay studies aside but making a piece of art that comes from a place where it's something that you really love doing just makes the process however many roadblocks you come across uh, more enjoyable and worthwhile and even if it doesn't turn out very good technically the essence of your your love and your creativity is still evident in the piece and so I find that nowadays I used to sort of not cringe at but like not understand how some people could like their own art and seeing people say that they're proud of their art it just was so it's so foreign to me um, and only very recently I'm starting to kind of actually like my own art a little bit because I've created these characters that I care about and I'm actually making stuff that uh, means something to me and is starting to mean something to others. I get such nice comments sometimes about my characters and people genuinely liking what I do and it's great so I just want to keep doing that and and just keep discovering myself and uh, sharing this world to everyone so okay that's me done talking about that more and more I'm slowly discovering myself and what I want to say with my art but nobody is immune to feeling down on themselves or just feeling like you're not good enough I feel that all the time no matter how many people may say nice things about my art or me trying to be positive about stuff just like yeah most of the time i'm pretty negative um despite how i may come across to some people i fortunately have not been someone who's been too attached to how many likes and followers i get on social media uh, there is definitely times when I do see something get not a lot of likes and I will feel pretty terrible. Everybody feels that way sometimes, but I, I just want to mention it because followers and likes do not determine your worth. It is way better, I feel, to build a following online and a presence slowly and through authentic means and really communicating and being involved with the people present in your art journey rather than chasing trends, worrying day and night about how many likes and stuff you get. Do not do things that you hate drawing just to get followers and likes because you want to build an audience who, who you can share a love for the same things with. and. That is not to say that you must not also think about the people you're sharing your art with, you know. Try and find a place where what you're making can be of joy to others and yourself, uh, you know, trying to... Uh, some consistency is important. I mean, you do have people who are looking forward to seeing the art you make and I don't think you should be too hard on yourself if you can't draw for a while, but uh, you know, just keeping in mind that you want to share with the world, so why would you not want to be making art? Uh, oh my, I, I'm getting a bit lost there with my thoughts, but, uh, but that's why I'm making these videos to try and find a way to get my voice through so i know i'm gonna make a lot of mistakes and not say things right but i want to make the sort of videos that i enjoy listening to and that is something that you can play in the background while you're making art and 
uh, that in itself is an art form. It's just trying to make videos myself just gives me a whole new appreciation for the artist on YouTube that I enjoy listening to. So I just want to say that if you feel like you're not good enough or you'll never be good enough, uh, you're not alone. While it takes time and I certainly have not fully discovered what I want out of my art, if you need to do fan art to, exp to try and find that thing that gives you that creative flow, um, or if you just, if you genuinely love fan art and that is what you want to do, then go for it. For me, I did, I spent about two years of my first part of my art journey drawing My Little Pony art and I loved it, but uh, over time I, I really felt that I wanted to create my own characters and my own thing, so I've started to shift gears into that. And you'll go into different uh, seasons. You don't have to be one type of artist for the rest of your life. Just find something that you really love and commit to that for now. If you are an artist and you truly love what you do, you are enough and you are good enough. And over time you will be able to express yourself more with the technicalities of art even if you suck right now and even if you think you suck you probably don't suck as much as you think you do i think i suck like really truly i don't think i'm very good at all but i just want to try and believe in myself and you to believe in yourself that we can all become the artist we want to be so there's my very jumbled up video thing uh, thank you so much for watching or listening i will keep doing my best to improve the way i speak and somehow find a way to get my th thoughts out through my voice in a more coherent way I know that is something that is going to take time and practice and so I do not want to give up making these videos. I just want to be able to talk. <laughs> I, my goodness, speaking is difficult for me, but thank you so much. I hope you have a lovely day and take care.